So hi everyone, I'm out on my bike ride today and I thought I might take the opportunity to use the wheel of my bike to explain the concept of aliasing in sampling. Because the wheel rotating is a good analogy to a complex number and a sinusoid. So let's go and take a look at that. So aliasing happens when you don't sample fast enough. And here's an example of me doing some star jumps. And you're looking at video now that shows the full star jump and the full video. And now I'm going to show a video where I've sampled it at a good sampling rate. And you can see that it jumps from frame to frame, but you can still see the fact that I'm doing star jumps. And in this case, we're sampling fast enough so that from those samples, we would be able to fully recover the original video. And now I'm going to show you if I don't sample fast enough. And here's an example where I've sampled of the rate of my star jumps. And it looks like I'm floating in air. And it would not be possible to recover the original video from those samples. You wouldn't know that I'm doing star jumps. Whereas in the first case where we sampled fast enough, you would be able to recover the original video. So I've got my bike up on a stand here and I'm going to use the rear wheel to really explore what's going on with aliasing. So here we have the wheel with the red symbol at the top and I'm going to spin the wheel and then we're going to think about sampling. So now I'm spinning it and it's going at a certain frequency. Now if I sample like taking digital snapshots like a photograph, if I sample at a fast enough rate then that red symbol will only have moved from to here to here to here and so on if I sample at a very fast rate. So if I take a, for example, if I take a photograph here and then here and then here and then here and then here, then I'll get lots of photographs and the red, each time I take a photograph, the red symbol will not have moved very far. And that is high rate sampling. Now let's think about what happens if I sample at a much lower rate. So I'm only going to take a photograph every time the red symbol gets to the top. So the wheel's spinning at the same frequency, but I take a photograph then the wheel spins, I take another photograph, so I'm taking slow sampling, take another photograph. Every time I sample at that rate, the red symbol's at the top and the photos would look identical. And so from those samples, you wouldn't be able to tell that the wheel was spinning. So now let's think about sampling at a slow rate, but not quite that slow. So the wheel's going at the same speed and I take a photograph now and then I take a photograph now, and then I take a photograph now. And each time I took those photographs, you will have noticed that the red dot has, is appearing, was appearing here, then here, then here. So each time the wheel had gone around almost the full way, and then I took a photograph. Then it went around almost the full way, and then I took another photograph. And each time, if I sample at that rate, which is slow, but not as slow as every single time at the top, but it's still a slow rate, now it will look like, if I just look at those photographs one after the other, now it will look like the wheel is spinning backwards because our mind will interpolate the smallest possible distance for the red symbol to have gone. So we know that the red symbol went all the way around and to there, but when we've taken our photographs, if we just look at the photographs, we will have think that it will have gone from there to there. And that's the common thing that we see on movies when a wheel looks like it's spinning backwards when in fact it's spinning forwards. So why is it called aliasing? Well, because the high frequency components, which the wheel is going at a high frequency, in real life it's going at a high frequency in continuous time, but that is mapped back once we take the samples, if we sample at that slow rate, it is mapped back to a slow frequency in the reverse direction. Now, of course, the wheel could, in fact, go twice around and then have our snapshot. And so in that case, what we realize is there are actually even for higher frequencies that also would satisfy those samples of the snapshot photographs that we took and one that could have gone three times round and four times round and five times round and so on. So just by getting the samples, you don't know which of those scenarios happened in the real world. And that's called aliasing. So if this video has helped you to understand aliasing, uh, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Of course, subscribe to the channel and check out the webpage in the description below where you'll find a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.